Hi, I'm Michael Fry. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about curves. And first let me say that I think curves are the single most powerful tool in the digital darkroom. Whether you're using curves in Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, or any other program, with this one tool you can make all of the overall tonal adjustments to an image quickly, easily, and with tremendous control. Now I'm in Photoshop CS5 and I'm going to start off in levels as a point of comparison and because I'm sure some of you are more familiar with levels than with curves. So I'm going to go to the adjustments panel, click on the little level symbol, and that makes a levels adjustment layer. In levels you have basically three controls, a black point, a white point, and a mid-tone point. Moving the black point increases blacks. Everything, as I move this over, everything to the left of this black point in the histogram has become pure black. You can see that in the image, you can see these dark tree trunks here that have become pure black. If I hold down the option key, and click on that little black point triangle, I can see exactly what parts of the image have become pure black as I move that slider. By the way, that's the Alt key if you're using Windows. Now, same thing happens with the white point. If I move that over, it sends things to pure white. It increases white, so it's made all the snowy treetops there pure white. Let me click on a different tool here so you can see my mouse better. There we go. So you can see that those areas have become pure white. And again, if I hold down the Option key, uh, Alt in Windows, you can see what areas have become pure white. And the mid-tone slider here just brightens or darkens the mid-tones. So in levels, the only way to increase contrast is to move the black and white points closer together. So I can increase contrast by doing something like this, moving the black point to the right, the white point to the left. I can show you before and after here. So there's before and there's after. And you can see that there's more contrast. But I've done so in this image at the expense of highlight and shadow detail. In other words, I've sent some areas, those tree trunks, parts of those tree trunks, to pure black. And I've washed out some small highlight areas in the snow. If I don't want to do that, there's really no way to increase contrast in levels in this image. So in other words, if I don't want to lose highlight and shadow detail, I really can't increase contrast here. Because the image is pretty contrasty to begin with, we've got some dark areas, we've got some bright areas, you can see that the histogram fills up most of the space available to it. You can see this little tail, uh, that's the whites in the snow. And so even if I move the white point slider just a little bit, I start to get blown out highlights. And if I move the black point slider just a little bit, I start to get black blocked up shadows. Now in some images I might want a little bit of pure black. Sometimes that gives an image more punch and snap, especially if it's kind of a contrasty and dramatic photograph to begin with. I would rarely want anything to be pure washed out white because that's something we don't see in real life. We don't see highlights that are blown out, washed out with no detail. So it looks unnatural. And in this particular image, I don't think I really want any pure blacks either. Uh, I'd like to keep the little bit of shadow detail I have in these tree trunks. I could possibly move this black point just a little bit, but not very far. Maybe, you know, just, just like that. Maybe some tiny areas of pure black at most. But since that makes such a small difference, I'm not even going to do that at this point. So the one thing left that I can do in levels is perhaps lighten or darken the midtones a bit. I might try lightening them a little bit in, in this image. So something like that. Now I'm going to turn off that levels adjustment layer, go back to my adjustments panel, and go to curves. 
Now with curves, you also have a black point and a white point. The black point is the bottom left part of the curve. The white point is the upper right part. And in Photoshop CS4 and 5, you have these little sliders, just like in Levels, that you can move over. So as I slide this over, I can change the black point and increase blacks. I can also hold down the Option or Alt key to see what areas have become pure black, just like in Levels. And same thing with the white point slider. One difference here is that if you actually move the points themselves, like this, you want to be careful to keep the white point somewhere along the top and the black point somewhere along the bottom. If they're floating out in space or off to the side somewhere, you're changing the output levels, which essentially grays out blacks and whites. So not really a good idea. So keep the black and white points along the bottom and top. Now curves are more powerful than levels because you can have more than just three points. In levels you have the black point, the white point, and something in the middle. So to do the same thing that I just did in levels, I'd leave the black and white points where they are and maybe move this midtone point up into the left a little bit. And that brightens the image slightly, um, just like I did in levels. So in curves, if you take a point and move it up or to the left, that lightens down and to the right that darkens. And if you want to get rid of a point you just drag it off the curve like that. So I don't want a point in the middle. I would rarely do that actually for an overall tonal adjustment for an image. But what I do with almost every photograph with curves is make a little bit of an S curve. So I'll place a point about three quarters of the way up, move it up and to the left. I'll place a point about a quarter of the way up the curve and move it down and to the right and make that little S curve. And you can see, I'll do a before and after, that I've increased the contrast, but I haven't moved the black point, haven't moved the white point, and I haven't lost shadow or highlight detail. I haven't sent any areas to pure black or anything to pure white either. So that simple little trick, making an S-curve, allows you to increase contrast without moving black points or white points, and allows you to keep shadow and highlight detail, and yet give the image more punch and snap. If you want to increase the contrast a little bit, you make a gentle S-curve like this. If you want to increase contrast a lot, you can make a sharp S-curve like that. Now if you want to increase contrast and lighten the image at the same time, what I usually do is just place sort of an anchor point about maybe a quarter of the way up. So this is right on that original line. And then move my three quarters point up and to the left. So if you look at the original line here, you can see that the midtones are now lighter. They're further up and above and to the left of that original line yet I've added more contrast. So here's before and after. You can see that the image is both brighter and has more contrast. Now if I want to darken and increase contrast, I would leave the three-quarter point anchored about there and bring this one-quarter point down. So that darkens the image. So here's before and after. Darkens as well as increases contrast. So basically what I'm trying to show you here is with these four points, black point, white point, a point around a quarter of the way up, something around three quarters of the way up, you can control how much of an image is pure black, how much is pure white, the overall contrast, and the overall brightness of an image.